This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. we're going to get that. Oh, what is wrong with the sound? Oh, son of a bitch. Let me see here. What, uh, what could possibly be wrong in that? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me go to here and then let me go to here and see where the audio is. I'm looking for the audio and I'm not getting the audio. Hmm. That's amazing. Look at that, folks. Oh, everything goes wrong with me here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, but No, no, no. I got to do something here. And I got to figure out what it is exactly. Oh, here, here we go. Uh, as that's active and that's active. Huh. Hmm. Well, I don't know what, uh, what the problem is. We don't have any audio. Um, let me see here. Monitor and output. No. Monitor... O only monitor off. Uh, no, 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 no monitor off. Okay, well, I don't know. I have no idea why there's no audio coming through. Uh, I mean, we could show me and uh, I could just talk to you now. I have no idea why this sound is not coming through. Uh, and I've got it up. I've got it up here. This is, uh, this should be, uh, l let me see something here. Uh, i got to see if my audio is fine. Uh, is there any audio coming through? Uh, let me see here. Let me do this and let me do sound settings. And then let me see here what we've got. Have we got anything? No, we haven't got any sound coming out of there. Oh, that's strange. Okay, well, hmm, I don't understand it. It should be coming through, but it's not. Let me, uh, let me just see something here. Oh, uh, well, what the hell? I can't get this working, so let me just uh, put myself here. Okay, all right, okay, here we are. Uh, boy, I don't know why there's no audio there. Let me just see here. Uh, what, what, what would this be here? Hold on a second. Let me just see here what I might be, uh, what I might do. Uh, let me just, uh, you can bear with me, can't you, here for a second? Uh, let me see here. And I know I'm going out with audio now. That's what I assume. Yeah, I'm going through with the audio. Uh, I have no idea why that audio wasn't going through. Uh, let me see here. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me see here. Let me grab a, oh, an old show or something and put it here and open it up and go um, okay. And now if I were to do this uh, and uh, bring this over on to three, okay. No. This well, is Gabnet. Well, that works. American Broadcast okay. Network, All right. In its eighth year. Okay. And that doesn't work. Okay. All righty. Well, no, what the hell? <laughs> I give up. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, we could just uh, do a thing where we talk to people. It obviously it works. Obviously, the sound on my uh, um, thing wasn't going to work. So. You know, I can uh, I can try something. One more thing here. I just want to I just want to see if something works. I have no idea. Anyway, I I have an idea here. Let me just try one thing just to see if it if it works. Okay, and I go browse, and then I go. Um, let me see here. Uh, I want to go. No, I want to go here. 
There we go. And I want to go to, uh, well, let me see here. Convert. No, I want to go uh, audio here. Let me just see here. This is last week's Kravitz. Let's see what, uh, no, this was the Kravitz I was just trying to play. Hmm. I don't understand it. Okay, okay. And then I go, mm. And there's no audio. That's strange, isn't it? Although I then go to three, and we have the uh, the opening of, uh, of another show. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, we got this. Let me see here. And then I go to three. Oh, okay. No, it's not working. Hmm. Well, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but if I go browse and then I go to, like, last night's show and I want to play that to you, uh, that will work. Watch. Watch what happens here. This is GabNet, the Great American well, Broadcast Network. I don't understand now, it. In its eighth year of talk. Okay, like well, I will, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, this uh, is uh, No, no, stop, 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 stop. Network. Now, in its eighth year of talk. Now, there we go. Now stop and go over here. Anyway, I don't know. I can't figure out why it, why that wasn't working unless there was no audio on that. And I can't believe that. That seemed, yeah, It might have been a bad, I don't know. I won't fi I'll won't. i figure it out later. I don't have to figure it out now. Uh, if anybody wants to call, I'll be taking calls early tonight, folks, because I don't have anything else to do. Um, it's uh, It's weird. It's really weird that those things didn't come through. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I give up. Yeah. So if anybody wants to call, call. Normally, you know, we don't take calls at this time of the show. And uh, let me just try one more thing here. Let me try some video here and let me try some, let me try something like this and put this over into uh, uh, the, um, the place here and we can uh, see if it, if it works. Uh, oh, hell. Uh, th this is ridiculous. Um, here, hold on a second, folks. I'm going to try and do something here. Here we go. Here we go. And we go with another thing here. And then we will go here uh, and try and see. I mean, if you're not going to call, I'm just going to keep fooling around with this. What the what the hell? People love seeing me fool around with this. Uh, and then I'm going to go. Uh, let me see here. I want uh, uh, video three, and then I go here, and then I go here, and then I go here. Okay, and then I go here, and then I go okay, and then I go. Uh, play, okay. Let me see. Out there, yeah. Out there, yeah. The you see, uh, there we go. We get uh, we get that going, okay. So I don't know. I, I uh, that it may have just been that one file that I was trying to play, and uh, I could try one last thing. Let me just try one last thing here, and uh, try this, and uh, go here with the and open and then okay and then I play this and there's no audio wow it's funny okay well you know uh, that's the way it goes folks uh, I was just gonna play a, a rerun oddly enough of an old uh, an old video with uh, with Steve Kravitz uh, because I didn't record one with him this week because this has been a this has been a rather harrowing week for me let me as you all know, as you all know, I've been dealing with this situation with my, my friend Shecky. And you all know Shecky because I talk about him on a rather continual basis. And um, to, we, have this, uh, we have this text, um, what do they call it, uh, text uh, chain uh, that has been created for people who are friends of Shecky and who want to be included in the, the Shecky um, uh, updates and so on. And uh, today they said something, I won't tell you what it said, and then nothing, nothing for the whole day, up until now, nothing. No, uh, no messages, nothing. 
and uh, I do know that things were getting more serious, uh, and that was the last thing that we had any kind of an indication of what was going on. Um, and it's kind of vexing to me because, you know, I really would like to get updated to know what's, what's going on, you know. Uh, it, it doesn't look, it doesn't look good, okay? That's what I'm going to say right now. I wish I could say it looks good, but it doesn't. Uh, and uh, we, but I, we, I just have no update for you. I couldn't begin to tell you, okay, uh, what if anything uh, I should be, uh, you know, I, I can tell you because I don't know anything. And usually they've been pretty good about updating this, you know, and um, I just think there's something, it's mysteriously quiet, which leads me to believe maybe that the family is involved and is being contacted and having to make decisions and so on so but I'll tell you you know I gotta tell you I uh, I went to the hospital yesterday to see my friend because it is a time of need and I wanted to be there for him and I had heard that he was you know sedated he was out uh, he was not communicative but I wanted to just be there in case there's something, you know, we don't know what goes on in somebody's brain when they're going through something like this, and we don't know whether they can hear us or not hear us or whether it gives them any comfort, um, but I just wanted to be there for him. And, and while we were there, and I go in, and of course he's got the tubes in the mouth, uh, you know, he's being intubated, he's being shot up with all kinds of stuff, and they had taken him off the, uh, off the uh, uh, sedation, but he wasn't waking up, uh, which is not good, okay. And I was there with him, and there he is with all these, you know, he, he doesn't even, he looks like Shecky. Yeah, if I look through the tubes and the pipes and the things like that, and, uh, you know, he's got about a five-day growth because he hasn't been able to shave, and his hair is all, all over the place, and he looks disheveled. And, you know, I'm looking at him and I'm going, I'm not doing him any good by being here. Uh, be, all I'm doing is probably, I, is supposedly making myself feel good that I am there for him, you know. And I, I wasn't able to, 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 to deal with it uh, on any meaningful basis because he was out. He was just completely out. So there was nothing I could do. So the only na thing now that was happening is I was getting this, this image of him, which is going to be the last image I have of him. And this is not the one I want. I'd like the image of uh, seeing him on our Monday show, up in the corner, doing what he normally did, laid in bed, and he said what he had to say, you know. I'd like to remember him vital and, and, and alive and not dying in a bed. And I can only remember the last time this happened to me. It was my friend Steve, who was my best friend at the time. I, you know, I was very close to Steve. And uh, I got a call. Uh, Steve is dying or dead. I can't remember what, but get to the hospital immediately. So we ran up to Mount Sinai Hospital. We went up to the room and there he was, over in the corner, in the bed. He had one of these big suites because he could afford it. In the bed. Dead. But not just dead, with his mouth wide open. And I just, you know, I said to myself, this is going to be the last memory I'm ever going to have of this man. It's not going to be the guy I saw even the day before who was you know, cranky and whatever, but it was, he, was, it, he was vital. And now I'm seeing him dead, and that's the last image I have of him. And do you know that image has remained in my head forever? I mean, just forever. And uh, I just, you know, so when I went down yesterday and I saw Shecky in that room, I didn't know whether it was going to be the last time I would ever see him, but I knew that if it was, it wasn't the way I'd like to remember him. 
you know, the last image I have of him is this guy in a bed all tubed up, you know. So it, it's, been, it's been rough for me for the last uh, 24 hours. And then to now not hear anything uh, where something would be posted if anything happened, uh, it really, you know, is vexing to me. And, you know, I don't, I'm not handling this thing very well, to be honest with you, you know. Um, I, I keep thinking about things like, uh, you know, one thing I always told you on this program about Shecky is he, he was a, a real scholar where, where film was concerned. You could ask him anything about silent films, for instance. He could tell you all the actors and actresses who were available in it, uh, who were in it. Uh, he was just very good when it came to, that's why he was the film coordinator on the Letterman show, you know, he's the one that came up with the, with the, with the clips of the, the, the cat, the monkey washing the cat, you've seen that one, or the owls uh, eating a mouse, um, things like that, you know, I mean, he, and he knew where to find these things, and he was a, a big, wonderful uh, scholar, of film, and I, uh, I just I appreciated that about him like crazy because I'd always go to him whenever I had a question about an old film or something or another. Well, I always used to mention that the that this film scholar, this guy who knew almost every movie ever made, except he didn't know anything past about oh maybe 1980, okay, because he just cared about old films. Uh, that this guy who did this for me. Uh, and, and was just this absolute font of wisdom and knowledge about film, had never seen Psycho. And he never saw Psycho. And he said that, I just, I said, why haven't you seen Psycho? And I think I've mentioned, I think I mentioned this last night. His reply was to me, well, so that when there's nothing else left to watch, I've still got Psycho. And the only thing I could think about is if we lose him right now, he will have left this life without ever seeing Psycho. Yeah. So anyway, it, it just was, it, it's just been kind of unnerving for me in the last uh, 24 hours. And, you know, it's funny. There's a certain part of me that many times says, has this happened with other people I've known have died and you know, they, they, they hadn't taken care of themselves. And I start kind of swearing under my breath, you son of a bitch, why didn't you take better care of yourself? You know? Now all your, your friends and the people who love you are having to put up with this thing, you know? Uh, because you didn't take care of yourself. And so you go into that, uh, that uh, you know, that, that hostility you kind of get to kind of ease the pain it's, I love the guy. Jesus Christ, I love the guy. He, you know, he can be very cranky at times. He could be a little difficult every now and then. But he could also be very giving and, and always, had to li always would listen to my little gripes about things. And I would listen to his gripes about things. And once a week, we'd talk about an hour on the phone, always. Uh, we had been doing this for years and years and years. It used to be for years that I would call him on Saturday. When I was out in California, I would call him on Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, California time. Every week. You know, so it, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I just wish I could have sat down with him when he finally decided to do it and watch Psycho with him. Anyway, I'll tell you, Brian Neary's on the line here, so let's go to him. What the hell? Uh, you know, I, Brian's a pretty good guy, uh, all, all things considered. And uh, let me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I had all those technical problems at the beginning, but you know something? You love technical problems when I have them. Whenever things go bad, that's when you're really watching in great numbers. Anyway. There's Brian. Hello, Brian. How are you? Are you there? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I got to turn on the audio. Yeah, I was, I was cooking uh, for Adrian, and then I was watching. I had the show going on, and then I saw Kravitz like this, and I heard you talking say, I can't hear sound. 
So I thought you were like with Kravitz talking with him trying to get sound. No, not- actually what I was doing, I could, I could actually get the sound, but I was doing my impression of Jack Bishop. <laughs> yeah, I was confused. So I was like yeah. half watching. So. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 I don't know what it, what it is. It may have just been that one video. Of all the videos, I just pick one at random of Kravitz, oh, right? So of all of them I picked, it was one without sound. Yeah, so, so my, you know, the guy who helped me with my building my cars, my, mm-hmm. my custom, so mm-hmm. he was 95, I think, when he passed away, 92 or something, but, and he was still in the same city in Pittsburgh, California, he'd been for forever, and mm. uh, he, I mean, he, they had, he was in the Hall of Fame for the city and all this stuff, but, you know, and when I used to talk to him, he he had such a knowledge of cars and all that stuff. So I used to love talking to him, but then he got to a certain age where he, all his friends were dying around him. And it just, I could see the shift in his personality and everything. And that's every time I'd go up to him, uh, every time I go up and see him, it's like every time he starts talking about who died now and, and, you know, that kind of talk all the time. And, you know, he just felt lonely that everybody's leaving him. And, and that's what happens, I guess, when, you know, your friends start passing away. And Well, you know, I had, I think, three best friends. I'm very funny about saying somebody's my best friend. I mean, I feel you're a friend of mine through this, but you're not a best friend. You know, a best friend is somebody who you're constantly in communication with. And if, you, if, if you're having a problem, they're there for you. If they're having a problem, you're there for them. And I had three really good friends. One I developed again later on in life after we hadn't talked to each other for several years. One was my friend Steve. The other one was my friend Bruce out in California, Hustler Magazine. Uh, and, uh, And we really enjoyed each other. And Shecky. And one by one, Steve died, Bruce died. You know, and all rather, rather young, comparatively young. I mean, you know, early, early, late sixties, early seventies. Oh, and, wow. and and I and I and I said to Shecky one day, I said, "You better not die on me, God damn it!" You know, <laughs> you're my last best friend. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, you know, I said, you know, you just better not go. You know, well, look at this. You know, this is ridiculous. You know, this just it happened out of a clear blue sky. Now, he's not dead yet, folks, so far as I know. But it wasn't looking good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't looking good. And yeah, one, one thing I, I mentioned on the show a couple of times, but yeah, my mom passed away when I was 13. <clears throat> and I was in, you know, I was in her custody because my parents got divorced when I was three. So she got remarried just before she passed away. And there was a group of people that knew her, you know, knew the stories and, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And when they started passing away, that's what really hurt me because it's like, then I can't have anybody to talk to, you know, about this. So yeah, yeah. Really tough. Well, I have, my father died uh, when I was, I think, how old was I? I was about 24, I think, when mm-hmm. he died. And my mother lived to be 100 and change. Right. right. Not 101, but 100 and change. And, um, you know, I... Um, so I had this duality of, of having my father go early, sure. and I guess of my two parents, I loved him the most. You know, yeah. I mean, he, I felt the closest bond with him. Not, and I'd like to say it's just because he was my father and I'm a guy, okay? But I don't think that was it. There was just, I always considered my father uh, just really smart and funny. Oh my God, was he funny. And I mean, if I get a sense of humor, I got my sense of humor from him. Uh, and um, and he, uh, I, when he died, I was, uh, I felt, you know, it's funny, uh, I'm feeling about Shecky in a rather stoic fashion. I was mentioning this to a friend of mine who was with me at the hospital yesterday. And I said, you know, I, I look over there and I, I can't be brought to tears. I just, there's nothing in me that makes me cry about this, and I don't understand why. And I said, I think it's something stoic in me that won't allow me to do it, okay? Uh, but I did the same thing with my father. I didn't cry at all. And then my wife told me that, that night when I went to sleep, I cried in my sleep. You know, it's like 
my face to the world has to be a more stoic, you know. Uh, and it's not that I'm not just torn up about Shecky. I mean, there hasn't been a moment today that I haven't thought about him, you know. And, uh, uh, but, but still, I, I kind of remain stoic, I guess, as a protective device. Would you, would it be a good way of putting it? You know, like when your father died, were you all torn up when it happened or did, was it, did, was there a delayed reaction to it? So my mom, when my mom passed away. When your mom passed away. So. Yeah. It, uh, it was just a shock. I mean, yeah. Yeah. In other words, you didn't know how to react. Didn't know how at all. I mean, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was tough for my friends because I went to my, one of my friend's house when the, when everybody came, but my friends didn't know how to react. You know, I went to one of my best friend's house and it's like, how do you react when your your best friend's mom just died? Very tough. You know, and I, I you know, like I read today on one of the missives that came through that we where we were getting some indication of how he was doing, that his kidneys were having trouble. Okay. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, he want a kid he wants one of my kidneys right now, take him, take it. All right. You know? Take both of them, put me on dialysis, you know, but keep him alive, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think like like I was saying, you know, with my mom, it's like a lot of the stories when other people started passing away, but there were relatives on my mom's side of the family. All those stories started disappearing with that, you know. Yeah. So I, I think that's one thing with you is, I mean, all the stories and all the knowledge and all the talk you guys had, you know, it's hard when somebody a close friend passes away because I know my close friends I've known for at least thirty years. And man, when they start dying, I mean, all our stories start dying. And when we get together, we start talking a lot of smack about stories, about things that happened when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And then all those start disappearing. And you don't have anybody to talk to about stuff like you that. You know, it's interesting. I The thing I'm happiest about for Shecky, okay, in his lifetime, yeah. is that um, he loved film. And he his hobby was collecting films. He used to collect literally the films in the film cans, you know, uh, which is, uh, that's a lot to keep, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but he did it. He was crazy about film. And he got a job over at Letterman as film coordinator that he had for the rest of his life, okay, because that job was a, uh, well, he he started with the morning show about three months into the, mo not the morning show, he started with the night show over at NBC about uh, three months into it and was with it for the next 30 years with Dave, okay? So you could say he spent the rest of his life absolutely doing what he loved. Yeah. Now, I can say that too. I spent all, you know, I spent all of my life doing what I love. Oh, maybe except for when I was, you know, driving food for the Chinese Food Express in Marin. Uh, but, you know, and even then I enjoyed it because we ate the food of other people's orders while we were going there but it, it, don't ever order Chinese food and expect it to come in complete and as a complete order you know but anyway so I, um, I, I I'm very happy for Shecky that way you know yeah. I'm, t I'm talking about him like he's dead and he's not but you know uh, I, I'm prepared for the eventuality and it's uh, it's 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 you know, it's also sad too, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a little too early for him, and we figured we had a lot more time to do stuff, you know. And I was, fi I figured, you know, I've had the prostate cancer, and I've got this little blood thing that I don't know what the hell it is. Although the doctors never called me back, so I guess I'm okay. I don't know. I have to assume that. Knock on wood, uh, or either that or he's a bad doctor. Uh, but, you know, I, I've been through those things. I figured, hey, you know, I'm going to go before Shecky. You know, Shecky's considerably younger than I am. And now this is happening. And I'm going, what? You know, I was planning on having him around for the end of The Last of Us. So, because he wasn't going to watch it until it had completely run so he could then binge it. Right, right. You know, and he'll never if he if he goes he'll never see it and I won't be able to talk to him about it. Yeah, and then, and then you know I, I messaged you a couple of days ago, but you know one thing I guess check is on the you know Monday show that I'm on every once in a while, but but like I said I, I told you that one time I said uh, when I 
asked you, you know, maybe we'll, we'll come and visit. And I said, well, maybe I'll just surprise you and knock on your door. And there we are. And yeah. Shaggy said, no, don't do that because then I can't come and see you, you know? Yeah. And so that was pretty cool to, to hear that, you know, when, when we do go over there that, you know, he wants to hang out a little bit too. So that, that was pretty cool. To hear well, you know, I mean, there were a lot of my friends who, who, when, it, when we came out to California, wanted to meet Shecky, you know. Mm-hmm. He uh, sounds like a very interesting guy. I, I've heard him on the Monday shows a couple times, and I Googled him because I'd never heard of him before. And he's got a, a pretty storied life, I mean, with Letterman and stuff like that. And I'm sure the guy's probably a great friend. Well, really, he, he I, hasn't done much in his life. He just worked for Letterman. That was it. Well, that was there, 30 years of his life, you know. I know, but there's yeah. there's some stuff on, on, on I mean, I, you Google me and look me up, you're not going to find anything, but the, he had stuff there. Yeah, I've never, and I've never the, looked up a, in Wikipedia, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never looked up his Wikipedia. Yeah, you and know? I said they have like 30 minute, a 30 minute, you know, of different clips of him on, uh, on Letterman. Yeah, in case people oh, don't know who we're talking about, uh, if you ever watch the late night, show the one at nbc he was elvis yeah <laughs> so yeah now, hi wayne how are you okay how are you okay you know i just kind of tuned in here uh i jumped on uh youtube gadnet only for a few moments <clears throat> shucky getting better no 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 no, no. no i don't i don't i don't uh i i don't think that's going to be uh, I don't think that's going to come out positive, you know. Uh-oh. But oh, well, geez. but but you know, yeah. miracles do occur, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all of a sudden, I could hear he wakes up and goes, "Where is everybody?" You know. So. Yeah. But I mean, there are too many things that have started going wrong. You oh, know? gee. And there is a prime cause of this whole thing, but I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. You okay. Know? Um, but. Uh, let me just say he liked his vodka, you know, mm. and, uh, you know, I mean, I just, you know, that, that's what I get mad about. I go, you, you fucking son of a bitch, you deprived me of you because you didn't take good care of yourself. Yeah. Why don't you ask everybody to leave the, uh, the, the uh, hospital bed and you give them a good slap and that'll wake him up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't well, know. I'll, I whispered in it. I, I, mean... I, I talked in his ear yesterday at the hospital. Good. You know, it, 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 he wasn't on sedation, so maybe part of him was getting messages from the outside, and I wanted yeah. to know I was there. But, you know, I don't think he heard me. I'm not being that ridiculous to suddenly think he heard me. Maybe he uh, did. Hmm? Maybe he did, and maybe that's... Hey, maybe listen, that's I'll never know he whether he play. heard me until I go and somebody <clears> does <throat> the same thing to me, you know? But I think that's all you can do. And, and if you're doing that and you feel, you know, that that's what you're doing because that's all you feel you can do. I mean, there's not much other things you can do. Yeah, but so. I, I, I wanted to be there for him, not for me. Right, right. That's but what really what it turns out is the only person who's being benefited by me being there is me. You know, that's the strange part about it. You know, I didn't have to go down there yesterday. I went down there yesterday because I wanted to say I went down to see him. You know, and didn't, didn't we just talk about what you were talking about earlier? I was talking about my friends that passed away lately, and and, and the open casket that they didn't look like the person that I knew, you know, because right. they right. tried to pick up and everything. And then that's the last view you see. And when we saw our friend pass away, I didn't want to go see her up there because I know I'm going to see this person that's not her, and it's going to remind me of her every time. Who did I? I think it was maybe Paul Krasner who told me that he had it in his will, and I don't know if when he died. He uh-huh. did this, but he uh-huh. wanted the mortician to make him up in clown makeup. Uh, and the, the, his reasoning is very good. He said he wanted to be made up in clown makeup, so when people walked by the casket and then walked out of the chapel, they'd be laughing. And everybody would wonder, what are they laughing at? Uh-huh. And I don't know that I don't think I wouldn't like the same thing. Just, you know, put clown makeup on me. You know, uh, dress me up to look like the Joker. You know, <laughs> you know, but uh, it it it's 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 uh, you know it 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 has been bothering me all day. 
you know, and and uh, 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 well, you know, uh, just. just but it's supposed to, if it's your best friend, it's supposed to bother you. Absolutely. You can see what's going on? So it, it's normal. It just, yeah, it just hurts. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I took Adrian <clears throat> to see my mom and my, my uh, grandparents are right there also. They're very the same. And the first time I'd ever say it, that uh, after all this these years, when I explained it to her, I just said, life isn't fair, you know. And, and, and it well, isn't fair. life isn't fair, but it isn't not fair. I mean, to begin with, here's how life's fair. No matter what age you die at, at least you had life. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a great gift you got. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I say, I've been saying, I'm, I have this great fear of death, and it gets even worse the closer I get to it. You know, I'm in that that uh, uh, that tunnel. You're uh, going to live to a hundred. Well, th don't say that, you know. That'd be Why? good. But if I live to be a hundred and I'm a babbling idiot, then I don't know if I want to mm -hmm. be a hundred. You know, I understand that. But, yeah. it, but, but going down that, that, that tunnel, um, you expect that, you know, you're going to go before other people. Mm. And I expected that, you know, Shecky would be, would be doing the eulogy at my funeral. You know, so wow, I mean. It'd be Phil. It'd probably be Phil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey. Can't you find some homeless bump on the street and call him your friend? That's probably what I would do, actually. <laughs> You know, um, although, although Phil, I got to tell you, Phil has been a good friend. Whenever, yeah, yeah. whenever yeah. I have a problem or there's, he hears about something or you he heard about, you know, Shecky, he writes me a note saying, hey, I'm sorry, is there anything I can do? You know, I mean, the, it, Phil is the most misunderstood person we have on this show. <laughs> and let me just tell you this, you know who, who misunderstands him the most? Phil. That's true. It's absolutely true. I mean, <laughs> huh? Phil's very generous. No, I, you know, I talked to him about before stuff like that, and he showed up at, at my our friend's car, so the friend we have in common. And the first thing he did was let's just take up my car, let's go down to McDonald's, and he got like I don't know how many coffees, like ten or twelve, fifteen coffees or something. He is. He's where he's in early guy. morning at the car show, and he brought those and just started handing them out to everybody that was there working on them. It sounds like we're doing a eulogy about Phil. <laughs> <laughs> he is yeah. a very generous person. I feel sorry for making fun of him all the time. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he minds I it. I don't think so. I don't think he minds it at all. You no, know. I, he, li he likes the debate. He likes the attention. <laughs> he likes the attention. He likes He gets plenty of attention. He owns the carpet business. Yeah. You know, he's got Stop talking about him or he's going to call. But yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like Beetlejuice. Say his name three times and he appears. Yeah. So. But, you know, I just, it's, um, I just, you know, I many times I, I and I pondered, I probably pondered this when I was a kid too. You know, I think when I was a kid and I laid in bed, what kept me awake was trying to figure out where the universe ended. I couldn't under I couldn't, in my mind, um, come up with a reason why I should you know why it, the, it was infinite you know it just went on there was no end to it, and I couldn't conceive of that, and I don't think any of us can even just sitting here you know it's a very hard thing to conceive, so then as I've gotten older now that I'm at this age I go. And and this is what bothers me about wars and about politicians playing games in Washington and so on. Each of us in the universe are so insignificant that it is, it's mind boggling, you know? I mean, let's face it, how long have, have we, has this planet been here, 30 billion years, something like that already? And I'm only going to live on it for maybe, if I'm lucky, a hundred of those years? I'm a, I'm a speck. No matter what I do here, I'm still a speck. And that has uh, that lately has been possessing me. Why the fuck am I here? I mean, am I just put here as a little ant to go around and, you know, do whatever the ant does in order to keep things going and then I drop dead and that somebody steps on me, you know, and that's it. 
and I and I wonder what, what's that all about, you know? Uh, uh, Marlon Brando. I always love the last words that people have to say. Um, Marlon Brando's last words were, "So that's all there was." What, so, what was that all about? What was that all about? What was that right. all about? What yeah, was yeah. what was that all about? Those were his last words. And I don't I like know, what people put on their tombs on the headstone too. Rodney Dangerfield, there goes the neighborhood. Did he you do know? that? Did he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, uh, I agree with Marlon Brando. Is that all there is? You know, is that that is that all there is to what we're we've done here? I mean, after it's all over for me, I'm just going to look back and go, well, I had a good life. But is that all there is? I mean, what is that so-called meaning of life? Why don't I get get the message? Why don't I? Why didn't I get the memo? You know. So I mean, it's it's, um, and every time I have you know somebody die on me, that's one more person. You know, it also happens to me when I'm reading when I hear so and so died. Like today, Robert Blake died. Oh wow! Really? Oh, really? Yeah, Robert Blake died. I go, yeah, Robert Blake died. <laughs> you, know? you probably you probably remember him as being in the business 30, 40 years ago, like when he played Beretta. That's what I remember. Him I I remember him from the R Gang comedies. No. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I wasn't around when they were first came out, all right, but I I you know certainly watched them uh, uh, later on, and I saw who saw that kid, and that was Bobby Blake, and then you know what he was in? Do you ever see Treasure of Sierra Madre? No. Robert Blake's the kid in Treasure of Sierra Madre. Who tries to sell him? I don't know, like a, a raffle ticket or something like that. Uh, 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 John uh, John Houston tries to get John Houston. Uh, was it? Is it John Houston? He goes up to no, no, no. It's it's Bogart. He goes up to. But that was Robert Blake. You know, he was he was working from the time he was in diapers for crying out loud. You know. In fact, what I'd like to say about certain actors is is there are certain actors. Who we literally remember them from when they were a child, and a, maybe even a baby, uh, and and you continue to see them. I'll tell you somebody you continue to see from the time she was a child till later on. Uh, two of them, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, you know, Natalie Wood. Hell, I mean, she was in. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street. That was one of the films she did when she was a kid. Um, so, I mean, uh, there are very few of those people that we have, and Robert Blake is one of them. We, I've, you know, we've been, if you want to see what he looked like at any point in his life, there are several things you can go look at, you know, and they're all there. And the only time he stopped working was after that, that murder trial, in which he was found innocent. But nonetheless, you know, uh, he worked pretty much most of his life. Yep. So, anyway, he died at, uh, how old did they say it was? 89, something like that? Yeah. That's a good life. Yeah, that's a good life. Hell, I mean, if I go tomorrow, I'm 83, that's a good life. Sure. Nobody's going to say, oh, he, you know, I remember my mother, it's all relative, you know. My mother, a friend of hers, died, and she died at uh, 92 and was uh, um, a couple of years younger than my mother. And uh, when I when we found out she died, uh, she looked at me and said, "Yeah, but gee, she was so young, <laughs> you know." And I'm going, "I guess it's all relative, you know." Um, but uh, it's you know, and then I you know I sit here with Marjorie, and we're not getting any younger, both of us, and you know, one of us going to go before the other one. And I, I don't want to look forward to that. I'm thinking of divorcing her just for that reason, you know. Get in a plane and, you yeah, know, yeah. If the plane crashes, you're both yeah. dead at the same time. So anyway, I, uh, um, uh, I it, last night uh, Jack was having problems again. Oh, Jesus, yeah. And he just didn't, you know, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, you know, we, we couldn't hear him. It was Charlie and Wayne and myself. We couldn't hear him again. We could see him. He could hear us. So we're sitting there talking while he's trying to figure out how to get hit, you know, 
his, his microphone on or whatever was going on. And all of a sudden he disappears. I thought, okay, he's going to reboot. And, but I thought, no, you know, since he started, I don't know if we could let him back on. So we sit there and talk amongst ourselves for about five minutes. And I see a little thing pop up at the bottom. It says Amy Manuel's trying to get in. I went, well, I don't know how to bring her in. I wasn't the host. But in, in any case, so I said, well, let me, let me um, reboot the, the, you know, turn, the, turn it off and turn it back on and see where it goes. And so Wayne and Charlie sat there and uh, I did that. And it took me to it took me to Amy and Jack and they were talking and they were in the middle of a question. And I said, oh, you're over here now. Uh, I don't know, you could ask Amy to text one of us or something like that, let us know. He says, I got a show to do. That's more important than worrying wait, about Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, where did you go to get him finally? Oh, we, we, I just I, I signed off and logged back on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't know what the problem was. He sort of, you know, when he, when you came on the show a month ago or something and kind of chewed him out for not taking care of the people that that uh, get on his show all the time, mm -hmm. I felt kind of bad for him. But last night I felt, you know, Alex is absolutely right. He, you know, he didn't care. And so I said, I'm going to put this on mute and send a text over to. Wayne and to uh, and to Charlie, and he says that don't worry or something like that. That they'll get her on their own. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Uh, so I just put them. I I got them over, and uh, you know everything. He still went on a little bit about you know, he's he's doing a show and that's the most important thing to him. Well, if you don't have anybody on the show. I mean, I, uh, Amy's a good. Well, person. I uh, I did. I went on. I I, I can get onto his computer. And I got onto his computer and fidgeted around with it a little bit, and supposedly he—I guess they got it working. He's been calling me to—he woke me up this morning. Oh God, you could drive you nuts! I'm <laughs> and sure. then uh, I, um, uh, then he, he, you know, he, he writes and keeps calling and stuff about. It. I want to talk about it, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't have time for this. I got a friend who's dying right now, you know. He and, doesn't and, understand and, that. And I, no, he doesn't understand it because he doesn't listen. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I just, I, for some reason, I just didn't want to deal with it. You know, I've got other things in my life I have to deal with, and I don't need to be sidetracked by this. You know, and so, you know, I hope tonight he has no problems at all, and I don't have to help him out at all because I'm not going to. You know, I mean, I've got other things to worry about, you know. He, he keeps talking about his 16-year-old great-grandson or something to come over and knows computers and you get him up and running and all that. And I'm like, oh, this is just old stuff. I didn't say anything to him, but it's just we're tired of hearing it because he isn't doing it. And I feel sorry for you. you got to keep, you know, doing whatever you do, tech support with him. How, how simple can it be to turn the computer off? And turn it back on the next day. I, I it should work that. the next day. Somebody somewhere touched something. Yep. Okay. That's what we were thinking. Phil Meyer came on the show too a little later on. The so. the only the only problem that he may have had, and it could have been the problem he had last night, is that sometimes that he has this thing called Zoom, which is a control board. Okay, not the Zoom Zoom, but the control board. Right. And and that thing keeps going on and off, switching on and off so the computer doesn't recognize it. And then he's got to go back in and say, okay, computer recognize this. And I don't know, so I don't know what may have changed, but, you know, something's changing every day. Yes, yeah. he, said, he said that he just got a new sound mixer. Is that what the Zoom thing is? Yeah. Sound mixer, it cost him $500, and he says it's great. That was like a couple of days ago. And then last night it wasn't so great. So, well, it doesn't come up on his on his thing. The, the old one comes up. So I don't. Know. I have not Anyway, deal deal with Jack. You worry about him. Jack, later. Jack, get on. Jack, Just fi tell him Jack, you're figure it out for yourself. That's the only way you're going to learn how to fix it. That's you know? right. You know. Because, That's what I would say. Because, no, because it's, it's just problem. like every time he has a problem, I'm here and I bail him out, and he doesn't have yep. to really figure out why it went bad. You know, yep. so, I mean, that's the only way you really learn computers anyway. 
Yep. You know, is just by, you know, touch and go. But if every time somebody's going to bail you out, you're never going to learn it. You know, so that that's it's what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, you know, I I want I want his show to go on every night perfectly because I don't want people to suddenly <clears throat> like you not be able to get on the show. Or be suddenly, in, it's not working, and it's this and that. And I heard him at a certain point last night where he was going, well, how come nobody's calling me? Well, they're not calling you because <laughs> they had trouble getting to you in the first place, you know. And what you've got to do is you've got to be consistent. You know, if not for nothing more, your 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 callers and the people you talk to and the people who listen to the program, you know. That's why every night, like tonight, I had a problem with my audio, and I had to figure out what it was. It turned out it was the file. It wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the uh, video. Uh, it wasn't the, the system here. But I, it took me a while to figure that one out, and people bared with me. But, you know, not terrible. You know, so. Anyway, that's that, you know. So uh, what is it? We're talking about you live, you die, and uh, nobody gets hurt, okay? You know, um, and you know who knows? Who knows how long we have here? And so you could do the best you can of it. I, I want to, but I just can't get myself to go outdoors anymore. I can't get myself to leave the house. How's the weather been? The weather, the weather's cold? been cold. Yeah. But then I also go, okay, so I'm going to go out. Well, what's out there? The grocery store? I mean, that's it. You know, what am I going to do? You know, I, 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 if it were summertime, I at least maybe could walk down five blocks or so down to what we call the Harlem Mirror and sit there and watch the Canadian geese yell and scream at people, you know? Uh, but I can't it really do that this time of the year. In fact, I don't even know if, the, I wonder if the geese are out there. I guess they are there. They're, they are all, they're all talking amongst themselves. Where is well, that? I don't know what Canadian geese are doing in New York City anyway. Shouldn't they be in Canada? A. Yeah, fly south for the winter. Yeah. Uh, or fly York. south for the winter, yeah. They're still, I think they're, they're down there right now. Yeah, you know. probably. So it's been, it's been what I call cold, not compared to you where you get snow. It's probably in the mid-40s right now. Mm -hmm. And it's pouring rain, so we're gonna get yeah, rain for a while. It started raining uh, today, and then it's gonna end like Tuesday. Like well, Tuesday in California, this year has been biblical. Yeah, you know, the only the, thing the only year. thing you haven't gotten is a you know a, a, a rainstorm of frogs. You know. Oh, maybe I hear them right now. Frogs. Yeah, yeah. really. It's... Yeah. Funny. Yeah, another atmospheric river is starting. Wait, 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 what is this bullshit? What's an atmospheric river? <laughs> I'll show you. I don't know, it's rain. It is? Yeah. It was like, it's like a long stream of rain that just goes nonstop. And, but have you ever, but before now, have you ever heard of an atmospheric Last year. river? Last, Last year. year. Remember who, and, so last year we heard that one the first time, and what was the other ones? There was another cyclone, bomb cyclone, cyclone, bomb bomb cyclone. Or something. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Was a, last year was the first time I ever heard those terms. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. bomb cyclone. But the, those mainly hit because they're really cold on the East Coast, I guess. Now you're where, Wayne? Cleveland, Ohio area. Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Beautiful outside. Yeah. You had some snow up there this year, didn't you? Not as much as we expected. As a matter of fact, uh, February was either the second or third least s snowiest February we ever had. Really? Because in other parts in that part of the country, it was like, you know, oh, yeah. biblical, yeah, like, as I say. Yeah, like Detroit and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, northern New York area. I think Chicago York was, was inundated with snow. But that didn't stop now. that didn't stop the gun play, however. No, know, so. apparently not. No. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I was to Cleveland once. Well, actually, I think I was actually in Cleveland twice. I was in it once, going out to the West Coast. When did I drive out to the West Coast and I wound up in Cleveland? I can't remember now. But then I I went out to see a girlfriend who I was 
see, got back together with for a short period of time, and she was living in Cleveland. Uh, and it was not a bad town. It was at that time, and this was maybe 15 years ago, it seemed like it was going through a depression. You know, yeah, probably. Yeah. It, financially, it's, it's, it didn't seem on, in good, you know, good it's, stead. It's, it's better now. You know, things have improved. Although everybody's got something to complain about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so today, 90% chance of rain. Tomorrow, 100% chance of rain. Saturday is 90% chance. Sunday is 70%. Then Monday is 90% chance. And then Tuesday is 60% chance. Wednesday is cloudy and sunny. Okay. And, Echo and, you, can't, and you can't depend on that because they, they were telling us earlier in the year before the rain started, like last year, this is an El Nino or a La Nina. And you don't get much water in California. You're still going to be stuck in the drought for years and years. And then we get the wettest, snowiest winter in 50 years. Echo, so what's, the weather, what's the weather forecast? The current weather is 38 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies. Tonight, you can look for mostly clear skies with a low of 31 degrees. Well, that's it. Nothing. Yeah. Clear skies. I'm we, not waving my hand. I'm just wondering why I keep going blurry. Uh, probably because you're drunk. Yeah, I probably yeah. haven't had yeah. anything to drink in months. Yeah, everybody, wish him unblurriness. So just, uh, wait a minute, what do you got to do? Uh, oh, there you go. It's cleared up now. Of course, I can't tell. I click on the settings. Sometimes I can turn it from... Well, don't... Uh, I always tell people, don't have your... Um, don't have your focus on automatic. Yeah, you told me because, that. Because what happens is, is that it's constant. It's constantly pulsing in and out to try and adjust. You know. Yeah, you had me. You had me turning it off. With Auto you. focus. You can just do regular focus, and you're just fine. You know. I'm close uh, enough to the yeah. thing. That Here comes Ray. But you don't have to call him Ray. You can call him Ray J. You can. Hey there. Hello, Ray. Hi, Alex. There he How is. There he is in in uh, in uh, Tony's Eichler home. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. And his mom's visiting. Yes, I was sitting there. His mom's so, visiting. So bad. <laughs> well, he, it doesn't bother him, so I don't feel bad about yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know, he actually, you know, I, I have to hand it to uh, to um, uh, Tony. Uh, he uh, he took the death of his mother pretty well, you know. Oh, guess who's here? Guess who's here? Is that I, his name three times? No, 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 no. <laughs> Bill. No. Tony. No, there oh, we are. Jack. Oh, you did Jack say Trisha. his name a bunch of times. I did say his name three times, so he's he's here. Uh, um, see if you get on. Yeah. <laughs> this could take Oh, no. Or oh, the was... Zoom bomber. Or the Zoom bomber because you no. said his uh, name. Wait a minute. Hold I on was... a second. It might be somebody who's trying to say they're Jack Bishop, but they yeah. aren't. I well, don't yeah, think yeah. so. I mean, let me put, put, let me put myself bomber. on. Let's see here. Are they there? No, it's not Jack. We, we talked Jack. about cars a lot last night, and normally when we're talking about cars, because Jack is really interested, mm -hmm. that he normally comes on the show. Yeah, it surprised me yeah. that he didn't come on the show. So who? Jack. Who? Jack? Jack. Oh, Jack. Jack, yeah. Jack only talks cars. Well, this isn't. This obviously isn't Jack Bishop. Let me see here. Let <clears throat> me uh, let me just get rid of him. Uh, remove. Okay, there we go. And cancel, remove. Okay, there we go. Got rid of him. I don't think that was Jack. I think it was somebody who heard us say Jack Bishop and immediately decided to sign in as Jack Bishop. But if he's having problems, he'll start calling you now anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, it, you know, I mean, we were, we were talking earlier about losing, you know, Okay, let me ask you this. You've you've had somebody who's died in your life. Uh, is your mother still alive, uh, Brian? No, but, but it's my mother that passed away. When is I was your first. mother passed away? Is your father yeah. still alive? No, every I buried everybody, even my grandparents. Okay, um, all right, all right. Everybody. So, and and how about you, uh, uh, Alan? Have you do you, are your parents alive or are they dead? Uh, my father died in 1992, and my mother is 90, living in Fremont. So okay. And Wayne, have you had somebody die on you? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Uh, and how about you, Ray? Both, 
both parents and, and my brother. Uh, yeah. My brother, who is a year younger than me, died seven years ago. Um, of yeah. Massive heart failure. Now, pe people who are listening, don't get depressed. We're not going to take this in a depressing <laughs> way. Well, kind of. Okay, what's worse? Those deaths or the death of a pet? A pet. Mm. A pet. Yeah, you do grieve a pet, far, I think, far more than you do any human being in your life, even if they were your parents and you were close and loving. What? Not me. Uh, no. I, so after my mom died, I started reading a lot of books about grief. And they say the bad thing about pets, when you have a kid and their pet dies, what's the first thing the parents do? Get another one? They get another one. And you can't do that when a human dies. That's true. I was really close to them. So how do you get too depressed now. when your dog dies and then, you know, tomorrow, oh, look at the puppy, here's another puppy. And I, they forget about the other dog. I had a cat for 18 years. And he died. And I just, man, I went into, you know, because that cat spent more time with me than any parent, any wife, anything. But you could get happy again if you got another cat. I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I had the cat in New York, and and uh, uh, we moved, I moved him out to California with me, and uh, I mean, I would sit there having sex with somebody, and he would kind of look at me like I've seen him come and I've seen him go, you know. I mean, it's like this cat spent. He knew everything about my life. He had seen me having sex. He had seen me eating dinner. You know. And he knew every, he knew more about me than anybody else did, even even my wives. So, you know. Yes, Ray. Well, my uh, my two my grandparents on my mother's side, I was extremely close to them, and uh, that didn't compare to losing a pet at all. I, yeah, uh, that was worse than losing any pet for me. Yeah. I mean, I think about them every day still, and it's been years, you know. Yeah, right. I think it depends on the relationship you have, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I had a good relationship with my father, but for 20 years before he died, he lives in San Diego, and so I didn't see him much. I was close to him, but, you know, I, I, my, my last dog was a boxer, and it laid on the bed and slept with me every night for 10 years. Yeah. And so I was so close to that dog, and... Having to yeah. put that dog to sleep, I said to the veterinarian, I think I can put my mother to sleep easier. And well, yeah. kind, of, kind of common, you know. You could be really close to pets. I mean, dogs and cats, their brains light up in the same areas as ours for all the similar reasons. Yeah, well, you know, for 18, it, I had the cat for 18 years, and when he died, I thought, you know, in those 18 years, he never spoke a word, but I thought he did, you know? I had a lot of conversations with that animal, uh, even though we didn't speak a language. Yeah. I mean, it's just very strange how you bond with an a animal. And I no. think the bonding is so strong if you're, if you're an animal person, if you didn't just get the cat because your kid wanted one, you know, right. uh, that, you know, that you, you really do bond with them. And well, especially cats and dogs, because humans have evolved with them for ten, thousands and thousands of years. So we have similar responses to things. Yeah. Yes. They, they've done all kinds of experiments on it. So I think that's part of it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I had uh, this cat I'm talking about was named Shabbos. And he was just a, just a terrific animal and, and a good friend, you know. And and very wise. I I I kind of felt I, he was my guru, you know. I mean, it was just amazing, amazing the relationship I had with this cat. And uh, eighteen years is a long time to have a cat, you know. So yeah. Why am I getting? My slapped? little dog's fourteen now. Really? Yeah, she's missing an eye. We had to have an eye. One of her eyes removed. Um, hmm. She I had a cat. I had a cat go completely blind, wow. and she could. You know, we moved into another house in, in Marin County, another apartment in Marin County, and I put her down on the floor, and she was all up and down the stairs in this apartment and going around. She she navigated it better than the other cats did. So, hmm. well, cats have those whiskers, and they they're full of nerve endings, and they can feel things, and they can squeeze through without seeing, and yeah. 
a yeah. pretty amazing animal. No, it was amazing to me that, that uh, w- without being able to see, I'm getting some kind of slap back here. Can you hear it? No. No? Okay. No. Uh, Slightly. I just heard a little tiny bit. Yeah. It's really yeah. low. I, I don't that know. That make up your mind, right? I did. For I did right after he said it. I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. It was super, super low. But anyway, you know, I mean, uh, animals, we, we get a very close thing with animals. But, I mean, not that we don't feel sad when a mother or father dies and whatever. But okay. somehow the grief we hold for animals is much different than that, you know. Uh, well, they they unconditionally love us, you know, yep. other, where humans usually don't. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and your dog loves you no matter what you do to it. Well, There's no. A, no I, I, well, and, no, there's, there's a difference between a cat and a dog. Cats will, dogs will love you unconditionally. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I love you, I love you, I love you. You're my master and I love you, boy. <laughs> you know, you're wonderful, I love you. Blah, blah. <laughs> and, you know, and they just, they love you no matter what. You can take them, throw them down a flight of stairs and go, I love you. I really still love you, even though you threw me down a flight of stairs. <laughs> but then you get a cat and a cat goes, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm hungry. <laughs> you just fed me? Fuck you. You own dogs, cats own you. Yes, yes. yes. Absolutely, Absolutely correct. Well, I had this cat, once she'd come up and she'd purr and you'd petting her and she'd be all happy. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like she'd just whack you for no reason. Wow. Well, wow. grab her by the tail and turn her into a catapult. <laughs> So I, I, there's a, a funny joke about this and the dog's loyalty. And I mean, it's somewhat funny. Put your, it says, put your girlfriend and your dog in the trunk of a car. This is how you find out who's loyal to you. Oh, and an hour later, open the trunk up and see who's still happy to see you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think we know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, You bet. You bet. But, you know, I love, uh, you know, animals have always, I've always been a real pet guy. So, you know, I don't have one now. uh, And the reason I don't have one now is because uh, I don't... Uh, You're afraid it's going to outlive you. Well, that, that's what I'm afraid of, you know. Um, who's going to take care of it if I go? You know, well, yes, Marjorie will, but who's going to take care of it when she goes? Somebody will. Or if I go, if she goes first and I go second, I mean, somebody's got to take care of that cat. How about we, willing it to Tony? Do you know Marjorie? Marjorie. Why am I getting this slap back? I have no idea. Um, I'm beginning to think, well, what could be causing it? Hmm. I have no idea. Anyway. Sometimes Zoom does some weird shit for no reason. It could be something that Zoom's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But anyway, it all sounds like to most people it's just an echo, you know. Uh, We're not hearing it here. We're not hearing it. Yeah, I'm hearing it here, but... Eh, what the heck? And I'm sure the audience is hearing it. Yeah, uh, it's just one thing after another, folks. Anyway, um, where where now? Where was I? Uh, pets, cats. Well, why, why you don't get a cat? Oh well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I oh Marjorie. So I'm I, I'm going into we have this little thing, and then you open it up, and you can see where you can hide a myriad of things behind it. You know. And I'm looking, and they're two big boxes. And they're cat toys. She bought a cat box, right, litter box. Mm-hmm. And she bought a, um, a, a cat tree that needs to be assembled. And I said, why? She says, well, I want to get a cat. <laughs> and I said, you know, you get the cat first, then you buy the accoutrements, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I think a cat tree saves your furniture with a new cat. Not really. Yeah. I got to tell you, cats will find that special side of a sofa. Right, Brian? Is your cat doing it? Our cat's pretty good. Our cat goes on a little stuff, but doesn't like rip it all up. Yeah, really? So. Really? Yeah, well, they, they sometimes, I found that even though you get them a, like a cat tree or whatever, they still, the side of a couch, wow, that's something else, man. That's cool. That's that's ambrosia to a cat, you know. And and you you know you can you can squirt them every time they try to do it, but you can't be there all the time. And before you know it, you've got a cat tree that's a couch, you know. So it's, it doesn't 
That doesn't. Oh, we don't have that problem with dogs. They don't. Climb I up. found that what I did is I gave one piece of furniture up to the cats. I had a chair here in San, in New York years ago, and that they started tearing it up. So I just let them tear it up until it was just it sat in the middle of the room in shreds. Okay, but they didn't go after anything else. Well, because they had that you know that chair, which they made a complete beautiful artwork out of. They were wonderful. It was terrific. <laughs> But anyway, so anybody uh, been uh, been uh, watching the uh, the demise of Fox Tele uh, Fox News? Yes. Yes. It, it kind of looks like uh, it, it, you know even the, even the right wingers are not happy with Fox any longer. You know, and uh, it looks like I uh, you know there it's not like there isn't someplace else to go. I mean, if people want to be real wackos, all they have to do is go over to Newsmax. Right. You know? Yeah, and that's crazy. You think this guy's going to, the, the guy that owns Fox News with... Uh, Rupert Murdoch? Yeah, do you think he's going to buy his way out of all this? I think he'll be dead before that. You know, he's pretty old. Yeah, I guess so. No, I I think Fox News is, it, it's getting to the point where, I mean, even Phil yesterday when I was talking to him, and I said one thing or another, he says, well, he says they're kind of dead in the water or something to that effect, you know? Like even to him, that isn't the place he's going to go anymore. And he does; they do have a place to go. They can't go to Newsmax, or worse. Well, Newsmax, in some ways, may be more legit than Fox is. I mean, Fox yeah. just blatantly lies to the public. How do you call yourself a news organization and blatantly lie to the public? You know, it's unheard of. <laughs> and then you know you got Tucker Carlson who in private text said that he found um, uh, something, uh, Trump to the, something to the effect of uh, uh, disgusting or horrible or un, unconscionable. He and said then he, he hates him passionately. Pa hates him passionately, that's how he ah, put it. And then he goes on the air and defends him and says, oh, the election was stolen and da 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 da. And you go, how can you do this? You know, how can you live with yourself? You know, Maybe Elon Musk will buy Fox News. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but, I mean, it, it's terrible. It's just terrible what they did, and it was terrible the, the lie that they perpetuated. And, you know, if people died on January 6th, it could be, you know, put at the feet of Fox News because people were watching Fox News and believed what they were telling them. And... Uh, you know, that was total irresponsibility on their part. But, I mean, Dominion is just going after them with a passion. Good. Good. No yeah, and they're not, yeah. they're not letting up. Nope. You know. Well, they destroyed their business. Yep. Well, I was talking with... Certainly Phil. damaged it. Yeah. I, I was talking to Phil about uh, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, that they did last night, uh, uh, you know, the, the, a couple of nights ago, where Tucker Carlson went on with these videos. And if you watch them, I mean, it's very interesting to watch them, watch Tucker Carlson do those, because to the average stupid person who watches Fox, it makes all makes sense, you know. But what, he's, what he did is he showed the tapes and then he told you what you were seeing. Now, maybe that wasn't what was going on, but he told you what you were seeing. And so he's going, oh, and then the, the, uh, the Capitol Police are leading the, the uh, shaman, uh, the uh, QAnon shaman around and trying to open doors for him and so on. And that probably wasn't what they were doing because you don't have any audio. They were following this guy around because they wanted to make sure he didn't steal anything. But do you think uh, you think uh, Tucker is going to say, "Hey, see, they're leading him around, but they're keeping a good eye on him because he could steal something at any moment"? No, he then interprets it. Oh, they're leading him around. They're showing right. him the place. And and, they're trying to minimize the violence that had already occurred by not creating more violence. Well, he says here are the shots they show you all the time, but here are the shots they don't show you. Well, the reason we don't show you those shots is that nobody's doing anything illegal in the other shots. But that doesn't matter. The fa it still doesn't, doesn't uh, deny the fact that people broke down the doors of the Capitol building and stormed through it. And I'm telling you, 
that if you are a casual uh, uh, a tourist of the capital, you don't knock down the door and break it and move, get, go in through the window, okay? <laughs> so all that stuff they were showing and the cops who were being stuck in doors and, and uh, the woman who got shot, on and on, on, we can go on and on with the thing, were all legitimate nonetheless. And that was terrible in and of itself. So don't show me just the, sh the shame and a couple of shots of the shame and walking down a hall, you know? He eventually got into the chamber and all of a sudden, the echo's gone away. Huh. Figure that one out. Anyway. Oh, now it's back again. Now I hear it. <laughs> now it came back. Yeah. But all I'm saying it's is it, it, it's really, it, was, it was really terrible how, and it was terrible that, uh, that uh, what's his name, the Speaker of the House, uh, gave him exclusive use of those videos when he should have, if he was going to give it out, you should have given it out to every media, you know, made it available to everybody. But no, that just was, made it, uh, he says, and eventually I'll give it to the other media. Yeah, yeah. you know, but. Uh, when it's old news. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it was just terrible what Tucker's been doing. And you know something? I used to do his show every week, you know, I was on his show when he was at MSNBC. That shows you how he, <laughs> changed, how he changes his tune. Uh, but he was a, kind of a right winger over there too. But he wasn't, you know, like he is now. Yeah. And I did a show every week, and I, you know, I was treated very nicely. I never saw him because he was out in New Jersey, and I was in a little robot studio in uh, in Manhattan. And uh, then there was another guy I did it with who was a right winger who was down in Florida, and so there was the three of us for about went on for about ten minutes a week. And he had us on on Fridays, and it was it was a huge, but I was treated very well and very nicely, and I kind of liked Tucker. I felt he was respectful of my views, you know. So the guy that I see now doesn't remind me of the guy I used to talk to once a week, you know. So, you know, even if you go back six, seven years ago before Trump, and mm -hmm. you look at some his stuff, it wasn't nearly as bad as it is now. No, I remember when he was on CNN with a kind of a. What point counterpoint kind of thing? Yes. Where yep. I forget what they used to call it. There were both sides, and he was on the right, and he wore a bow tie, and they yep. that made him big. Uh, everybody he got very popular because he wore a bow tie, you know. Uh, but that was amazing. It was just amazing, uh, you know. So, anyway, that, you know, I I I'm I'm amazed by the whole. A thing that's happened with Tucker. It's just not the Tucker Carlson I knew. You know. And do you know that he is so so much in the pocket of the of Russia that every night they show clips from his show in Mo, uh, on Moscow TV. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. He's considered a good friend of the Soviet Union. You know. I heard I heard some defector from Russia say that he uh, that Tucker Carlson is. The most, one of the most popular clips on Russian TV. Well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, there's no difference between Russia and Fox. And here's, here's, let me hear me through when you hear what my reasoning is here. Is that in both cases, if you only are enmeshed in that thing, then you're going to believe a certain set of rules, you know? And the fact is that in the Soviet Union, you, you don't get any other news but what they want you to hear. And so, therefore, you accept everything they say. Uh, and, and the United States is horrible, and the United States is trying to, you know, hurt the Soviet Union, and they were, you know, they're going to they're gonna attack, we're going to attack them any day. They believe that crap. And the same thing is true of Fox. People who do nothing but watch Fox are going to believe a certain set of values, a certain set of truths. You know, and, and um, every day Marjorie watches MSNBC all day long. I mean, every time I go in, she's watching MSNBC. Oh, I love Nicole Wallace. I love uh, uh, Katie Turr. Uh, God, I would hate to have been her growing up. In school, I mean the things they must have called her. Hey, turd! What are you doing, turd? Anyway, so I, I, uh, you know, uh, she watches it all day long, and I keep going. You're rotting your brain with this stuff. 
Yeah. Because again, you're only getting one side of the story, even though the other side may be wrong. You're only getting one side of the story. Here, both sides. Every now and then, I go over to Fox because I want to see how they're parsing a story. Because you know, maybe sometimes they could be right. I haven't found them to be, but they could be. You know, and that would then uh, give me a little more information that I can uh, I can be involved with, and you know, whatever. But anyway, I don't know what the. I don't Dr. Carlson must live in a very conservative neighborhood. Because I'm surprised somebody hasn't taken a shot at him or something. Well, you know, I mean, I, 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 I don't know how, I, how he gets around in life. I mean, does he have armed guards with him? Maybe. You know, I mean, I would say all those people at Fox probably should have them. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, and, and they shouldn't have to worry, by the way. They should be able to do what they do. Because it should be that there's an audience, the audience as a whole out there, knows to take everything with a grain of truth. You know, I'm watching uh, Fox. Hey, I'm going to take it with a grain of truth. I do the same thing with MSNBC, you know, because they're out to, you know, give you a certain message. So anyway, it's, you know, that's the way that is. Ah, oh, boy. Did, did you hear Lauren, Lauren Boebert is going to be a grandmother? Is she? Yeah, she's 36 years old. She's going to be a great, well, so how old was she when she had her kids? Wow. She was, she was like 18 or 19, and her son, who's like 17 or 18, is going to have a kid. And she announced it today and was bragging about how wonderful it is that in the conservative states, they don't get abortions for teen pregnancies. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so the people can grow up and... Yeah, and, yeah, and have terrible lives. And have yeah. terrible lives. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I, I just think it should be up to the person whether they want to have a kid or not. You know, if I, if I had a girlfriend and she got pregnant, and she wanted to get an abortion, I wouldn't fight her on it. But if she wanted to have the child, I wouldn't fight her on that either, because I believe that she ultimately has the right to decide to do with what she wants to with her body. And you know, I would rather that some of these gir some of these girls who get pregnant would rather get an abortion and then later on be able to have a child when they want to and when they can afford one, you know, yeah. where it doesn't ruin their life and their future, because now all of a sudden they, you know, none of these Republicans are saying, "Hey, listen, I'll I'll give you money to raise your child." Yeah, you know, I'll send you to school if you just keep the child. There's nobody saying that. They're just saying, bad, don't do that. You can't do that. We won't let you do that in our state. Um, by the they way. Say, they say how precious these kids are, but they don't want to do anything to help them once they're out of the womb. Nope. Nope. No. So it's so hypocritical. They could end up in poverty on the streets selling drugs, gangs and stuff, because they have no family to take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't understand it, you know. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, uh, you know, but I mean, then again, I, you know, uh, and if I had a girlfriend and she got pregnant, I would not want her to get an abortion. I'd want her to have the kid, you know, I'll t help you take care of it and so on and so forth. But it's still up to her. It's not up to me. And, and all the people who are making these laws are men, you know, married and, men, married men. Yeah. And, and Lauren Boebert. And Lauren Boebert. <laughs> you know. And yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, well, too bad abortion wasn't, it isn't retroactive. We could do it on several <laughs> people. Both her and Trump and, and Tucker Carlson, all three yeah. of them. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Hey, there's our theme. Uh, hey, thanks, everybody, for calling. It's been a small little crowd here, but, you know, nice discussion, and you took my mind off of stuff, and I... I really appreciate that. You're all good friends, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, thank you to, uh, to uh, uh, Brian and his raft of cars. How many cars do you own? Only three right now. Only three. I see. Okay, I used to own two, so I, you're one up on me. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 Alan. Alan. Oh, boy. 
Uh, and uh, thanks, Wayne. Good talking to you again okay, tonight. It's been a, nice having you here. Been and, a pleasure. And uh, thank you, Ray. I always like having you on. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Wait a minute. What did, did I? Did I? Did I have? Was that on? I, I don't know what. Oh, I see what happened. Oh boy, I had my face on for the whole uh, about the last half hour because I tried to keep us from when. Uh, who was it that tried to get on? And Jack Bishop tried to get on. So, eh, well, forget it. Uh, don't watch this show tonight, okay? I'm getting to the point where I just do a lousy job of this. Anyway, I'll see you again tomorrow night. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Good night, everybody.